everybody, how's it going? Got something real cool today. We've got the very first ever interface from Neumann. This is the MT48. What's cool about it? What's exciting? Why should you care? Let's get into it. So Neumann reached out to me a little bit before NAM and said, hey, you want to check out our new interface? And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, twist my arm. Of course I want to check out your new interface. Uh, they had acquired Merging Technologies their last year. And I know Merging makes some of the best digital gear on the planet. So I was super excited to see what they'd be coming up with. And this is the first product uh, to come from that acquisition. And I got to say, yeah, this thing kind of really blew me away. It's just a little desktop unit, but it costs $1,850. $50. Why is it so expensive? Why should we be concerned? Uh, let's take a look at some of the specs on this thing and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So what's special about the MT48 is that it comes with bleeding edge analog to digital converters that boast 136 decibels of dynamic range. There's two mic preamps with 78 dBs again, plus two line and instrument inputs, as well as four analog outputs for routing to outboard gear. But you're not just limited to these ins and outs. There's ADAT and SPDIF connectors. And what's really got me intrigued, an AE. S67 network audio connector. It's got a touchscreen interface, onboard DSP, and most importantly, the ability to do four separate monitor mixes. And the whole thing can be controlled remotely over a tablet. Let's head over to the desk and see what this thing can do. I just want to show you guys just how easy this thing is to work with, how easy it is to dial it in, all that kind of stuff, because this thing is absolutely killer. I've been working with this over the last few days, just diving into the capabilities. And every time I uncover a new feature or you know discover something new, it's just like, how did they cook all this stuff up. The capabilities of this thing are just absolutely ridiculous. I've got it in a dead simple setup right now and I just find it stunning what this thing can do. Let's bring this over here and we can see this. We can just pull up our mic one controls here. We've got a preamp control and we control our gain right here. I'm also got it over here on Reaper and I can see exactly what's going on here. Hit, the red, hit it so it turns red and you can dial it in. We can just add a little bit more gain like that. And that's pretty damn cool right now. And let's pull that up a little bit more. I love the fact that we've got all the controls right here. We can throw on a low cut, take that out a little bit, add a little bit more, you know, take it off completely, whatever. We can turn on a pad. We can take that down 24 dBs if we want, bring it back up, you name it. And just like that, it's really that simple. Uh, one thing I'm gonna mention here is anytime you want to return to zero or back out, just hit the diamond button right here and it takes you back to the main screen. It's basically your escape button. Now I gotta say the one thing I really, really surprised me about all this, notice I'm doing two tracks here on the desktop. First one here I've got here is MT48 input one, but I've also got input 13. Now the thing that I love about this is that it does give me two tracks here. I've got a choice. I can have the track raw if I want, and I can also use the process track. So I can throw on my EQ and dynamics and work that way as well. It's great. It's kind of like giving yourself a safety net. I usually record most of my shows with two tracks doing the exactly the same thing in the analog realm. But being able to do it right here at the desktop without any external processing, I think that's just awesome. This is a pretty cool way to work, I gotta say. Now, if I wanna bring this up, if I wanna say turn on the dynamics, here's our control here. All we gotta do is hit the on button and look at that. Now we've got that wonderful voiceover compression going on. Doesn't that just sound great? And then we can just unhook it as well. It just, it remembers your settings. Uh, there's also a snap menu here as well. So uh, we can just reset it and turn it off. Recall, boom, done. The only thing I don't like is once you, once you recall a setting, it brings you back to this menu here of presets. So you've got to hit the escape button one more time to get back there. Uh, we'll bring that back up. This is my voiceover comp setting here. We'll recall this. And there we go. Notice that it's gated as well. That sounds absolutely flawless. That has to be one of the cleanest voiceover gates I've ever heard. So if you're doing explainer type videos where you've, you're not listening on headphones, but you're working with monitors and whatnot, and you're worried about mic bleed and whatnot for playback, coming into your voiceover mic, this might be exactly the thing you're looking for. I gotta say, this is just stellar. And if I back out of this again, we can throw on a little bit of EQ as well onto this. And again, I've got a little bit of a voiceover EQ going on here. We're just going to turn this on. And this is what we got. We got just a little bit of a low frequency roll off right here. And then a little bit of boost in the high end. If I want to add a little more 10K on that, 
and we can crank that up just a bit more as well. Now, the touchscreen is truly outstanding. It really is. As of right now, it's a little bit laggy, and I hope that they get it fixed. I think that would be a great improvement. Once again, you know, we can, we can adjust the EQ here. It's not grab a point and drag. Hopefully, that's something that gets fixed as well. You can, you can select them here but it doesn't allow you to make any kind of adjustment up and down that way or whatnot. Uh, you have to grab the controls here. Hopefully that's something, again, that you can do through the remote app. Now, what's really cool here is there's also this web app that you can use to control the unit via your tablet. I haven't got it hooked up to my tablet yet. I'm just playing around with it here, and it seems to have pretty much all the functions you would want right here, EQ, dynamics, all that kind of stuff, right on one page even. And, you know, again, it's it's pretty snappy response. Oh, look, look at that. There's a little dynamics meter there. So if I want to bring the threshold down and really start stomping on my vocal, it'll do the thing right there. That is just super cool. Once again, we turn that off. And it doesn't quite have the, the same zing and pizzazz that, uh, you know, just kind of beefing it up with the compressor here does. I, again, I really, really love this feature. That's so cool. Now, the purpose for having a, a tablet application would obviously be for your discrete headphone mixes. Say, if you've got a musician out in the studio, a drummer or a singer or whatnot, and they want a little bit more control over what they're getting in their headphones, uh, they can take control of it right there and do their own custom mix on a tablet without you having to disturb anything here in the studio. I think that's just a fantastic way to work. I can't wait to get it all hooked up in here and try it out. All right, another feature I really like here is the whole expand stereo linking here. I think that's great. It'll let you mute solo, do all that kind of stuff. It really does the trick. And you can control it here on the unit itself. You can control it from the remote control. It just works great. Hey, great job there. Now, I did have a chance to record some acoustic guitar with this the other day. Uh, so what we did was we recorded one mic and then the PZO output into the direct input here on the MT48. And then the results we got were nothing short of astounding. I'm going to run you guys two versions of this. One's just the dry tracks we got off the preamps. The other is with some onboard compression going on and maybe just a slight touch of EQ and reverb. Check this out. All right, now one of my biggest gripes with the small interfaces is the DI. Usually they're designed without the head banging crowd in mind. And it's not just like the small, uh, cheap ones that you get. It's even some of the big names. They don't bother to check the DI on a guitar hotter than, say, a single coil Stratocaster. Oh, it's fine. Until, you know, I get to review it, try plugging in one of my guitars and like, hey, we can't turn this down low enough. Why is the signal clipping? Why is this thing so expensive and nobody checked this? Fortunately, it looks like the guys at Neumann actually did. I've got channel three here as a DI set down at zero. Just run a little amp sim action here. Check this out. <laughs> Yeah, that's a negative 12 dBs. We've got tons of headroom here. I can crank this up to, I like about six and a half, eight dBs, somewhere right around there. <laughs> Cool. All kinds of headroom there. No danger of clipping. And it looks like we can still crank it up a couple more dBs, although I wouldn't quite recommend it. Sounds like we're getting plenty of gain going into the amps. And that's a total win. It's clean. I'm not noticing any kind of latency or anything like that. Very happy with this setup and the fact it's got more than enough headroom for pretty much anyone's pickup needs. Great job, guys.
Playing through an app sim is one thing, uh, but the big question is, hey, what happens when you start hooking up the real stuff here? Got a real app here, and Sennheiser was kind enough to provide me with the E906 square front microphone. I gotta say, I'm pretty blown away by the results I'm getting. This was a no-brainer to set up and mic up and get great results. I mean, seriously, check this out. <laughs> Yeah, super easy to get a great tone. Absolutely love how easy it is to work with this microphone. Now, this is just playing by myself here at the desk with amp sims, with real amps. Hey, you know what? That's great. But the big question remains, what happens when the clients walk through the door and they need you to provide a killer mix? Is the MT48 going to work as a mixing platform? Here's the first mix I've ever done with it using that wonderful 906 square front microphone. Check it out. There we go. I gotta say, I really liked working with the MT48 as a mix platform. I thought it was great. Just having, you know, the volume control right there, access to all the controls and everything. Super great stuff indeed. So let's take a look at the pros and the cons of the new MT48. Okay, so on the pros list here, uh, number one here, I've got the ridiculously clean sound quality. The converters are great, the preamps are great. Really, I don't know if it gets any better to be completely honest. Uh, this is just absolute top of the heap uh, kind of stuff going on here. And uh, yes, I'm in, that's for sure. So much so, I'm almost considering maybe making this the hub of my studio. More on that in a second. Secondly, we've got the effects, which you can print on your way in or have uh, to different tracks completely dry. I think that's a great idea that can definitely save a lot of work down the road, especially when you've got to produce content on a daily basis. Uh, this thing is going to be a massive time saver, that's for sure. Next up, we can snapshot all the common effects settings. So if I've got a vocal chain that I really like for voiceover as opposed to say singing, uh, that's really easy. Once again, the interface makes it super easy to get to and recall. So that's fantastic as well. And of course, the other thing is that wonderful AES67 connection. That's why I'm considering making this the hub because now I can explore network audio, uh, not only with AES67 format, but it's also backwards compatible with Dante. So if I want to hook some Dante stuff up in the drum room or whatnot, it's just literally hooking up a network cable to a switch and away we go. It's really that simple. Very cool stuff indeed. And that's something I want to explore in a future video. We'll see where it goes anyway. Now let's go over to the desktop. All right, other things I really love about this thing is the fact that it's got a built-in talkback mic. So it makes it super easy to talk to your musicians out in the studio, say drummer, your guitar player, whatever. It's got a tiny little pinhole mic here and you can set them up for different discrete headphone mixes. And that's the other thing here. You've got two headphone notes, which is great. And the fact that you could literally give a tablet to the drummer, hopefully he doesn't get too confused and can figure it out, but he can set his own mix up. That is super cool as well. I think that's a really cool feature. And you know, now I've been to studios where they've spent thousands of dollars on systems uh, that allow the musicians to have control over their own headphone mixes. This does it right here. All you gotta do is hand a tablet 
to a musician. Hell, they can bring along their own, install the app, and away they go. I think that is just super cool as well. And of course, that goes along with a wonderful remote control app and most of all, the dead simple interface. This thing really lets you get to the point and quickly. Uh, now for the cons. There's a couple things that I don't like about this as it stands right now. And number one has to be the screen lag here when it comes to the dynamics. If we just go on here, it's like, you know, I'm moving the dial and then something happens a little bit later on the screen. I don't know if that's still because I'm in beta firmware. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Hopefully it's something they can address down the road at some point. It's not a deal breaker, especially because we've got that snappy on-screen interface on, on the computer whatnot. That works pretty well, so it remains to be seen. Now, the other thing I don't like right off the bat right now, and once again, it's still early software, is that there's no real loopback feature where you can take a playback and run it back into the mixer here and then use a sidechain compressor to stomp down on say like uh, playback from a DAW if you're doing a narration explainer type video. This is a feature I use all the time. If I could do it right here, it would be real cool. I did reach out to them, to the Merging Technologies crew, the people who built this, and they were saying that it is possible, but you literally have to get an ADAT cable uh, and route the output to the input on, on this thing and then have it sidechain on inputs three and four. Apparently, they are going to have the sidechaining input on the DAW playback uh, available sometime in the future, but as for right now, uh, not so much. So we'll wait and see what happens for that. The jury's still out. Uh, it looks like they're going to have a fix for it. Just don't know when it's actually going to be. All right, so final word on the MT48. Gotta say, it really did blow me away. The capabilities of this thing are just unreal. And the overall sound quality is just, well, I think it might be the finest set of analog to digital converters I've ever had come in here. I mean, like I've got some great stuff, but this is just kind of on another level. I'm, I'm pretty impressed, that's for sure. Now the price tag is $1,850. This is not a cheap piece of gear, but this is probably going to be the last converter you're ever going to buy. The preamps are great. The converters are great. Yeah, you really don't need more. At this point, if you're not getting good sounds out of this, it's probably you and not the gear. Now, am I going to be using this in the future? Am I going to be using this in my day-to-day -day productions? Well, there's a very good chance of that. As they continue to develop the firmware and the onboard processing and all that, uh, as soon as they get that side chaining thing figured out, it'll probably go right into my day-to-day -day because I could really use that to just speed things up. Not to mention there's that AES67 connection, uh, which means I'm going to be able to hook into all kinds of network gear out in the studio and all over the place in here. And I think that's really freaking cool. It's something I definitely want to explore a little bit more because I think it's kind of awesome. And if it helps me compact down what outboard gear I have and maybe uh, lose a couple of racks along in the process, I'm all for it because I'm trying to simplify things as much as I can. For more information on the MT48, you can follow the link to the Neumann website in the description below. And I've got links to it at Toman and Sweetwater as well. And if you've got a question about this, I will try and answer it in the comments below. Just feel free to leave one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, so final word on the MT. <coughs> Damn, I need coffee. All right. Fuck, how hard was that to get out? Ugh.